This is a Cameroon Journal editorial with the subject, The Challenge That Lies Before All of Us Now. Again, the title is, The Challenge That Lies Before All of Us Now. There is no doubt that two major sites have now emerged in the struggle for the restoration of the Southern Cameroons. Why a very tiny fraction preaches federation an overwhelming majority are proofs of total independence as the way to go. A little division, it seems. It appears, however, that the tactics both camps want to employ to achieve the ultimate goal remain the same, which is the uniting factor amongst us. Consider the spirited show of opposition to Bia's delegation to Belgium. USA and South Africa, for example. Such vigorous resistance was without political labels or leanings. Nobody showed up at any of the events in a Federalist t-shirt or, or signpost or an independent t-shirt or placards. The resistance had a single message channeled through the anger and invectives directed at Lauren Esso, Dion Nguti in South Africa, and uh, Ngole, Ngole and his team in the USA. And a message was that of freedom for our people and our territory, the Southern Cameroons, our Southern Cameroons. Now we are faced with the challenge of all times, that of schools shut down, and whether you are a Federalist or Secessionist, once more, we all are in agreement that school resumption for the 2017 and 18 academic year must be stopped. The agreement is even stronger among all the nationalist movements, be they home or in the diaspora. This is indeed the kind of spirit we need now in this struggle. It is the kind of spirit that both federalists and separatists must continue to cultivate. In fact, it is a kind of spirit that will give us the ultimate victory we need. The only problem hanging on the balance is that nobody seems to be articulating for how long the schools remain shut down or the conditions under which the school shutdown should be lifted. Of course, the easy answer is to say that till we get our independence or federation. But then the next question becomes, how do we get it? How do we get there? This is a significant question that demands an answer from policymakers before we engage in this next struggle, in, in this next phase of the struggle. At the Cameroon Journal, we see this as an imperative. It will demonstrate to the world the visionary leadership that we have. Here at the Cameroon Journal, we are of the opinion that resumption of schools must be tied to two things. Number one, the release of all Southern Cameroonians held in captivity in La Republique du Cameroon. And number two, a successful summons and conduct of a referendum in the Southern Cameroons. A referendum that decides on the form of government Cameroon is to assume thereafter. Any form of dialogue that doesn't have the release of all detainees, unconditional release, and the holding of a referendum on the agenda must be fiercely resisted. Only a referendum can give us the way forward, and whether you are a federalist or a secessionist, we can all rally around the referendum subject and speak as one person, making the demand that unless such is conducted and our leaders release unconditionally, schools in the southern Cameroons will remain indefinitely shut down. There is the urgency to have this included in our roadmap so that we do not just come across as mere agitators which the Republic of Cameroon want the world to believe with no constructive plan, but with the sole goal to sabotage what they do. We need a referendum movement that will begin right now to forcefully make the case for the convening of one. 
a referendum with two questions in the ballot. Do our people want to stay with La Republic of Cameroon in the federal system or whether they want an independent Southern Cameroon? A vote for either of the two will give us the type of federation that we want or give us a country that we can call our own. Only until then should we be willing to negotiate schools resumption in our territory. Such an approach gives us opportunity to revamp the educational system, drafting a new curriculum no matter what way the results of the referendum goes. Having said that, it remains to be seen what the governing council and other movements are putting in place to practically enforce the school's shutdown. Presbyterians, Baptists, and Catholic institutions have all sent out comments to the effect that their schools are resuming lectures in August and September. Skarkov in particular and every concerned Southern Cameroonian ought to be sending out to these mission institutions the message that they should be prepared to choose between their infrastructure and school resumption. In this regard, every Catholic, Baptist and Presbyterian school must be a target, not the students, because if they close their doors, no student will show up. You lower down three, four, or five of those institutions or structures, and the rest understand the language. Skarkov has to ensure that all the self-defense groups in every county are equipped with the resources necessary for effective operations. In not only Skarkov, this is a moment for all the groups that have been preaching self-defense and door-to-door and raising money to come out and be counted. It is time for the AGC and the SCYL, including Morris, to come out and contribute to the success of the shutdown. The time when we all talk on WhatsApp, Facebook, and all of social media is past. Now is action time and resources are needed. We are at that moment where organizations or groups that have collected or raised donations for this cause since last year must show themselves doing exactly what they promised to do with the money they raised. Morris in particular still has thousands of dollars sitting in his account. Donors would want to know that such funds are going towards this school shutdown campaign. If the AGC, SCYL, and Morris do not show their organizations as visibly, directly, or indirectly sponsoring operations on the ground or sending out funds to Skarkov to coordinate ground efforts, they will soon be called upon to render account of the finances they have been raising. Every Southern Cameroonian has a, has a peculiar role to play at this very critical moment in the struggle. The diaspora, the youth who live in the home front, the police, army and gendarmes of Southern Cameroon's origin who served in La Republic of Cameroon force, Southern Cameroonians living in French Cameroon territory, everyone has a role to play at this time. Southern Cameroonians in the diaspora should pick up the phones, call your families, and tell them to stock food that can last for weeks or months. Tell them to respect ghost towns, to remain indoors when necessary, and obey other instructions as directed by the governing council. There are allegations that La Republic of Cameroon is once more planning to shut down the internet. The governing council has to know that if internet is disrupted again, communication through SCBC TV remains the only channel of information to the homeland and as such, it must take preemptive measures to step up briefings at such a moment. The youths in every county should take this upon themselves that they are the foot soldiers for this struggle. The youths should understand that self-defense is a right, not a privilege. In every county, young men, young people should form vigilante groups
to defend their towns and retaliate against any police arrest, torture, or brutality. Every school or college that opened its doors for lectures must be hurriedly shut down by the news before others follow the bad example. For southern Cameroonians serving in La Republic of Cameroon forces, you should know that you are the army and the police, that the southern Cameroons will need at liberation. Don't connive with your slave masters to arrest, kill, or torture your own brothers and sisters. If you cannot decamp to join the struggle, consider leaking every piece of secret and instruction an instruction from La Republic de Cameroon to the struggle. We have created a link at the Cameroon Journal through which we can leak secrets to us, and we will never ever disclose your name or identity. Besides the link, you can also send leaks to the Cameroon Journal using the email leaks at cameroonjournal.com. Again, the email is leaks at cameroonjournal.com. Southern Cameroonians living in Francophone territories, especially Yaoundé and Douala, must be prepared to leave at very short notice. This means withdrawing enough cash from your bank accounts and keeping it where you can have immediate access in any emergency. Francophones, especially in Yaoundé, have been known to attack Anglophones each time there is heat in the Southern Cameroons. If you have property in Yaoundé, Douala, or any of the Francophone cities or towns, make sure you have gathered, make sure you gather all your paperwork or documentation now to a safekeeping in the event you have to vacate the city or the town. Every parent in the southern Cameroon is one. If you love your children, keep them home. La Republic de Cameroon isn't going to be paying any indemnities in this war. The war had just started. If you still don't, if you still don't have SCBC TV in your house, make sure to buy the antenna and install it before it is too late. At the Cameroon Journal, it is our belief that the moment has arrived, the moment has come to let La Republic de Cameroon know that we, Southern Cameroonians, mean what we say and what we want. Again, you heard this from the Cameroon Journal. You can read the scripts of this editorial at the CameroonJournal.com and you can reach us at editor at CameroonJournal.com. Again, the email address is editor at CameroonJournal.com. I am Chris Anu and thanks for listening today.